The Hall of Fame is the Idaho Technology Council's premier signature event and the largest celebration of technology and innovation in our state. Here we are again in our fifth year to induct two more outstanding individuals that have made tremendous contributions to technology in our state. These men will leave a lasting legacy far beyond our state. They join quite a list of history makers that have been inducted in the Hall of Fame in previous years. In 2010, it was Dick Hackborn and Ray Smellick. 2011, Steve Hodges and Jack Limley. 2012, Dr. Forrest Bird and Bob Locken. And last year, 2013, Dr. Tim Barber and Greg Carr. Joining the outstanding contributors to technology are this year's 2014 inductees, Don Kemper and Steve Meyer. Both of these men are, men are tremendous leaders and examples to the technology community in the state. Please help me welcome this year's inductees. We'd like to thank Zions Bank for hosting our second inductee to the Idaho Technology Council Hall of Fame. That's Steve Meyer. You can read more about Steve in the program, and we'll watch a video in a couple of minutes as well. But let me give you a little bit of his background. Mr. Meyer's career spans several decades. Early on, he pioneered the use of huge video displays for advertising in places like Times Square. Later, he founded Advanced Input Devices and served as CEO and chairman. He's played a prominent role through investment and leadership in several companies, including Spider Staging, Centennial Foods, Telemetric, and Trigeo. His current project is Intermax, Intermax Networks, which is a rapidly growing data transport company. In 2005, his, he and his wife Judy funded the $1 million Meyer Technology Fund at the North Idaho College Foundation. Mr. Meyer holds degrees from the University of Idaho, and an MBA from the Wharton School of Business at Pennsylvania University. Please watch this video and learn more about his remarkable career and achievements. One of the, the very important characteristics of Steve is his understanding um, of the value of community. Um, so we found that investing in Idaho and finding talent in Idaho is possible. One of the things that's a great advantage, particularly in Coeur d'Alene, is it's such a wonderful place to live. And so there are talented people from urban areas who want to leave and bring their families to a more of a small town environment. The concept of combining those lifestyle amenities with the opportunities to build a business with the technical resources is an interesting one. He's always found that it was a compelling case. There wasn't the competitive environment here. It was an opportunity to be an entrepreneur with access to those resources without pressures and some of the competition for them. And it was an easy opportunity to recruit engineering and, and um, other kinds of innovative talent here. People found this as a unique opportunity to have that combination of lifestyle in addition to having a career uh, at some of these smaller companies that we've been starting up in Idaho. Steve probably deserves to be in a lot of halls of fame. And um, one would be Idaho in general because he and Judy have contributed and continue to contribute so much to this state in the world of technology, in the world of business, in the world of innovation, in the world of real estate, in the world of historic preservation and economic development and cultural development. Steve's really passionate about does the small town in North Idaho have access to the same resources as we do here? How can we make sure that um, Hope and Sagal and Bonner's Ferry and, and, and Rathdrum and the Silver Valley have the same sort of access to technology so that we can accomplish, they can accomplish what we're 
doing here in town where it's a lot easier to get to. The community to Steve is very important and we're not talking just the local community. He is, uh, I'm sure, broader than even the state of Idaho. His community involvement and Judy's community involvement is really legendary. I mean, they have been involved in so many different projects. As time evolved, uh, it began to occur to my wife and I that that we could make a difference in the character of our community and, and what it represented to live there. So we got engaged in mostly small organizations trying to work on community affairs. Sometimes they had to do with city or community planning. Sometimes they had to do with social issues in the community. To my recollection, my dad's always been an innovator. He's always interested in tinkering with different things and particularly taking things apart, understanding how they work and understanding ways that you might tweak it to make it a little better, a little more efficient. He's really interested in innovating elegant solutions to complex problems. Innovation is in Steve's DNA. <laughs> it truly is. And our days can be intense in that they're long, but there is always creativity, questioning, what about this, what about that, what if we do this, how about if we do that? And at the same time applying discipline. What I've learned about him um, and being able to mentor under him is that he is extremely um, creative and innovative in his thought. Um, most recently um, he played a large hand in our acquisition, NIC Foundation's acquisition of property adjacent to the main North Idaho College campus which people refer to as the Education Corridor. That legacy that acquisition of property will allow North Idaho College for the next 100 plus years to meet the educational needs of Northern Idaho for generations to come for forever. He likes detail, uh, he likes to think about those details and he'll grind on them until he feels comfortable with a solution that he believes uh, will be effective in whatever he's doing. I like details when trying to understand a problem because usually the solution lies in those details and it's so easy, particularly when the problem is complex, to, to gloss over all of the pieces of the solution. So I've found, at least in the way I have enjoyed working, that dealing with those details is satisfying and becomes essential to the, to the final solution. Whether it's in the world of technology, economics, culture, social, the social world, real estate, down to very small details like how does a pump work? You know, it's the, the curiosity is ever present. It's, it's really a delight and I learn a lot from being around Steve. He'll have a few nights where he'll think about something and eventually get to a position where he's comfortable with it and then if he's comfortable with it, then he's able to make decisions and move forward. If those are tough decisions, I think that, that thinking, that, that detail that he begins to work on uh, translates into then good decision making and something that he's comfortable with. Even if it's difficult, he's able to do that. You'll find a person of such a great accomplishment and vision, but one of such amazing humility. I recall a story as a kid that my older brother Drew and I were asking questions about his early career stages and realized that he held patents on certain keyboard technologies and he was such a humble man he'd never thought that that was something worth mentioning or talking to us about and uh, my brother to his credit did the research found the original patent documents and framed them and hung them on the wall for dad and he just never felt like those kinds of accomplishments which are tremendously successful merited any mention. You know, you really can't be a strong leader if you don't have a high level of integrity. And Steve personifies uh, integrity to its fullest because people trust him, he's honest, he's going to tell you what he sees and he's not going to beat around the bush. I've had the great opportunity to deal with a lot of different types of people in my life. And what's most interesting to me about Steve is he is as even keel a person. Success is met with excitement and, and enthusiasm and defeat is met with, well, shucks. How are we gonna get on to that next piece? Inevitably, people like to talk about themselves. Most people like to talk about themselves more than they do somebody else. And so people walk away from meeting Steve and say, what a nice guy, what a good guy. 
and at the end of the day, he's just let you tell your story, and that's really an important part of, I think, who he is. I would say that Steve is warm, he's extremely thoughtful, he's a strategic thinker, he's very kind, humble, and very persistent, and his work ethic uh, is incredible. I think life's way too short to sacrifice integrity in any aspect of your life and your business and uh, keeping a set of values which is true to how you really believe um, is also important and it works for your business colleagues and it works for your customers, it works for your lenders or shareholders and it works for your family. I just think that if you study the background of Steve Meyer, for those young people that are looking for kind of a, a role model, you know, Steve Meyer would be the, is the epitome of, the, of a great role model. It's about how you use your resources that I think is a great role model for Steve. You know, he's, uh, his resources include mentoring. He loves to work with young people. And I think that young people should identify with that and, and realize that there are people out there like Steve Meyer that like to help them with what their education is or what they're, if they're starting a business or um, whatever, whatever they're thinking about doing. You turn to somebody like Steve and Judy and you're going to get some really good help. Every month at our board meetings we have a student come in and talk about what does the scholarship mean to, to he or she. And Steve introduced our student last month and you could just see the joy that he took in this young man who's in his mid-twenties who has overcome um, his upbringing to be pursuing a degree in petroleum engineering because he wants to make a greater impact on this world and Steve's joy in introducing him and you can see in the smile in his face and the tone of his voice how proud that makes him to be a part of that. And so it's a privilege for me to get to see that side of Steve Meyer. When thinking about advice to give to um, ambitious entrepreneurs, um, I think one of the most useful things I can suggest is the notion of strategic thinking and persistence. It's just really important for people who are committed to an idea or a concept to be thorough about continuing to revisit their fundamental, what they believe to be fundamentally correct, to be courageous enough to think outside of the box, to try to be strategic about where you are and where you want to be, and make plans to, to get there in a methodical and timely way. But by far the most important um, characteristic, I think, is the stick to the persistence to get there. And uh, I would suggest that if people have good concepts and, and uh, have the right kind of management talent and the right kind of financial um, posture, that persistence usually wins the day. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome our 2014 Hall of Fame inductee, Steve Meyer. Congratulations. Thank you. Thank you all. I'd like to begin by introducing my wife, Judy. Judy, would you stand up? She's been my life partner. She's been my life partner for 49 years, my best friend, and a collaborator in, in many, many ways. As I begin, you've all been sitting here for two hours plus, and so the phenomenon of fanny fatigue is upon us. So would you all please stand up? and wiggle a little bit. I want to tell a story about Jay Larson right here in front of me. A fun Idaho success story. Oh, Jay's over there. All right. I can't see because of the lights. A fun Idaho success story is the Idaho Technology Council. Jay Larson started by himself in a borrowed office uh, with the objective to initiate a private organization with no public money and build a mechanism to bring together Idaho technical companies and people. 
in a few short years, look at where we are today. 900 of you standing out here today. So I think we should give Jay, the ITC committees, and all of the volunteers a big round of applause for their accomplishment. Okay, we're done. Many people out there deserve this recognition more than I do. Uh, I salute all of you who dream big and then set out to accomplish your objective. I'm appreciative of many things that led to this podium. Probably the most important was the break of being born in America, where the lack of a dominant social class structure allows anybody to work hard and be successful. We all take that for granted, yet in other parts of the world, it simply does not happen this way. And so the first of my advantages is being here. Think about the tremendous advantages we take for granted. We have the rule of law, a legal system that does not work. And outside of Western Europe, most places, that's a challenge. We have private property rights, like land and intellectual property. And we have the marvelous benefit of functional capital markets where again, besides Western Europe, that doesn't exist. And then the most important, universal public education. So I'm very appreciative of all of those opportunities. I grew up in Boise in the 50s, an ag town of 37,000 people in the rural West. I had the benefit of a wonderful education in Boise school system, the University of Idaho, and the Wharton School in Philadelphia. I had the benefit of great mentors, too many to mention. I didn't do these projects by myself. Uh, there was a team involved in every case that made it happen. Some of those people are in the video that you saw earlier today. There's two others that I'd like to highlight who have been strategic in what has happened. A friend of mine named Jay Lewis, who's with Washington Trust Bank, has been a teammate in the banking community for over 30 years. And he's an incredibly creative banker. And what we have done would not be possible without his imagination and creativity. So thank you, Jay. <laughs> the other strategic person who was not in the interviewees is our office manager of 26 years, Peggy Leonard. Thank you, Peggy. <laughs> Innovation, like the 12 projects we saw tonight who are candidates for the recognition, the product of a single, usually visionary leader and a team, usually small, of capable people. The ability to assemble a team to get a task done and then manage that team to execute successfully is one of the real unique properties about what makes this small business process work. And so I suggest to you that it's perhaps the most important element. If the product that you develop add something to the marketplace, you have a tremendous advantage. Most startups that are Me Too products don't succeed. Concept I took away from my first job working for DuPont as a student engineer a long time ago is to produce something whose value in the marketplace is far in excess of its cost to produce. Now, it sounds simple. It really helps if those concepts have the change, opportunity to change the world. Think about nylon, Teflon, and by far the most successful, stretchy fabrics. <laughs> in, in 2014, the same opportunity exists in software, and other people tonight have spoken to that opportunity. So we don't take ourselves too seriously, and it's easy to do with all this fancy honor stuff going on. Here's a one-line story from DuPont, which I think is really fun. And it's addressed to my colleagues here, the ladies in the crowd, Ladies, if your bra has spandex in it, DuPont had a hand in it. <laughs> Our world has become technically complex and globally competitive. The best way to compete is to nurture talent, hardworking people, like we have a work ethic in Idaho, and then give them a good education. I believe we need to set high standards, like Dick Fosbury's bar, high standards for our education system in Idaho. We need to cultivate broader public appreciation and support of public education. The stronger public expectation will make it then a priority in our legislature. We need to ask our education professionals 
to propose and accept performance standards. And we need to optimize technology to improve education outcomes. And let's not lose sight of the value of a broad education. It's become popular in Idaho to advocate education spending for training to benefit Idaho business. And of course that's because Idaho business, all of us, have taken a role and we care about education spending and education policy. The logic of saying then we should spend more for, to benefit business has broad political appeal. But I think education is much more powerful if it contains more than narrow training just designed to be quick and inexpensive. You need to train people in critical thinking. And you'll notice there's a theme that I'm maybe the third speaker tonight to mention critical thinking. It takes a broad horizon to make productive people. Think about the fact that we're still the only nation in the industrialized world where we only speak one language, or maybe one language plus Fortran. <laughs> Don suggested. I'm trained in a technician in science and finance. My wife has a much broader education in the humanities and social sciences. I continue to be amazed and delighted at the things that she knows something about that I've never heard of. And of course, that leads to spirited discussions in our household about what's important. But the point is that that broad education, teaching people to think, is important. And um, it becomes part of what I think the right strategy for Idaho needs to be. I suggest that all of our workforce entry people should have strong basic skills in reading, composition, arithmetic, including a little algebra, although many students are afraid to death of it, and a little history about where we have been. In every business, we need people who understand the data around them and that they can draw conclusions from that data in a reliable way. So the reasonably the same set of facts are presented. Many of our people, many of our employees, will draw usually similar conclusions. Let's not be too hasty to claim victory in our statewide goal uh, of 60% of the students by 2020 to achieve some postgraduate education, post-secondary education. Let's not be too hasty to consider that we're successful when that post-secondary education is a 12-week course in something. We missed the point. We need broadly educated people who can think. They may not have to have a college degree, but they need to be, to be good citizens, to engage in the political process, and help chart a course for the future of Idaho. The American competitive advantage comes from our creative people. Many of you are examples of that here tonight. Let's give all of our young people a strong head start with a good education. Thank you for listening. Ladies and gentlemen, can we get one last round of applause for our Hall of Fame inductees and our Innovation Award finalists and winners?